Praise God. Just put me up, will you, Bricky? Hey, Bricky. <laughs> Thanks. Good morning. What a glorious day. Every day is a glorious day, isn't it? You wake up, you're breathing, it's a glorious day. <laughs> when that doesn't happen, it's not such a good day. <laughs> God, do you believe that? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's just pray. Let's put your hands up. You're all under arrest. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Just say this. We're going to open up the well of healing, hearing and healing in this house today. Jesus. Jesus. Do you love me? Oh, there he is. He's talking already. Jesus. Oh, just wait. I'm in love with you. There you go. That's his boyfriend down the back there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just stay there. I've got to tell you, once you open up that well of he hearing, he's, he's talking. He's a very talkative God. He loves talking. As we do this, if you get a single word or two, just bring it out. Because it's the Lord speaking to us all. Well done. There's a bold man. Praise God. Be bold. Your brothers and sisters are going hungry, waiting to see what you're hearing. Lord is saying, just because things are going to the past doesn't Praise God. Yes. Yes. Just keep waiting on the Lord. Very good, slow speaking. Very good. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah. Give it to me. I'll, I'll cut it. Red. I'll be, I'll be quicker than you. <laughs> I can, I can chuck it to people from here. Praise God. Keep listening. Keep listening to the Lord. You've opened up your ears, spiritual ears, by asking one question. What's he saying to you? Yeah. Behold what manner of love the Father's given to us, the love so great that we should be called the sons of God. Well, oh, well done. Praise God. See how quick that was, Ricky? <laughs> <laughs> Go, don't touch it, just go. <laughs> if you take a magnifying glass out in the sun, you can focus on a specific place and there's enough of God's vision to see everybody and if he wants to focus on someone, no one else is getting neglected. You're all in his sight and he focuses on someone that thinks that they're irrelevant it's because he loves them all the more. You're not insignificant. No matter what you're doing, no matter where you are, he's got his eye on you. And sometimes he puts a magnifying glass just to turn the heat up a bit. And it's him doing it because he loves you. Well done. Eye is not seen, ear is not heard. What God has prepared for those. Mind is not conceived. Mind is not conceived. Amen. Amen. That's it. Oh God, that's getting quick, isn't it? Just hit, watch this, Brie. <laughs> I'm serious. My children, you've known me as the Word. You've known me as the truth. You've known me as the way, the Saviour. But you're about to know me as the life, the coming King. Amen. Get ready, because a new thing is happening. Amen. I'm coming as a lion. 
get ready to experience a change. Don't fear the world. Don't fear the virus. Don't fear the control that's happening. Look to me. The tribulation that's coming, don't be afraid. If you're close to me, you'll barely notice it. I'm coming as a king. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah, mate. I'll hand it to the slow coach. <laughs> Praise God. We're getting a bit of God's heart, aren't we? Listening to the Lord. I, um, I've been doing some study because I want some answers for myself, things that I'm going through. And I think it's going to help a lot of you, really. <laughs> Um, as I share it. Welcome to all the visitors, by the way. Um, just pray you get what you need here today. Amen. And uh, welcome to the Zoomers. Praise God. And I, is that time, is it? Okay. Thank you, Lord. I've been, I've been getting back into faith. I started in faith when I came into the kingdom. I've walked into faith as much as is possible for me to walk in obedience over the years. I've also walked in disobedience quite often. I know you wouldn't have that problem. Uh, <laughs> but um, I have. I've, I've, I've found times when my faith isn't where it should be. And, um, and I'm a faith man. I'm a man of faith. I believe strongly that the Word of God and those promises belong to me. Through them, I become a partaker of the very nature of Jesus Christ on the inside of me. And, uh, and that's been a key to me for healing, for everything that I've needed. I've been healed many times by the Lord, and I'm so thankful that in this life, our paths crossed. He knew me before I was born, before I was knit in my mother's womb. And so it was inevitable that somewhere along this life I was going to touch Jesus, same as every one of you. He called you before you ever knew him. <laughs> he called you. And so he's here to guide us and lead us. And whenever I need answers, that's exactly where I go. Amen. So just let's open up at Psalm 23, verse 7. Is that right? Is that where you are? Try Proverbs 23. Because that didn't sound right to me. <laughs> it was right for Psalms 23, but for Proverbs 23 is a totally different scripture. <laughs> Very good. Like a Bible class today, isn't it? <laughs> Praise God. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That'll do. <laughs> verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is, or so is he. As a man thinks in here, that's what he becomes. That heart is a place of change. It's a place where the God can get hold of us, place his word in us, and teach us, and allow his word, which is the power of God, to come out of us, to be manifested. And faith is manifested in the heart. As a man thinks in his heart, he is. That's where faith is manifested. So faith is manifested in the heart. Amen. That's exactly where faith, you know, you hear the word of faith and you mix it, well, you hear any word and you mix it with faith in your heart and you've got a miracle. Do you realise that? You hear any word that's in this Bible that belongs to you, mix it with faith in your heart, and you have what you're looking at. Hearing? You have what you're looking at. Faith is power. Faith in God's word is power in God. 
releasing the power of God through your life. The word is a spiritual weapon. It pulls down strongholds because it's God. In John, in the book of John, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. I'm going to give you a new understanding. In the beginning was the verb, and the verb was God, and the verb was with God. Do you know what a verb is? If you're doing, most people fail English, I know. <laughs> but when I was at school, I was good at English. The one thing I enjoyed, because I had another language and I, and I was learning English. <laughs> and the verb meant a lot to me. It was a doing word. Something had to be done. So God is the doing word. He spoke and here we are. He proved to us he acted in faith. There was nothing, there was a void. His spirit hovered over the void. Just imagine his spirit. His spirit is breath. That's how the Jewish Bible describes it. It's not a word that you can pronounce. It's breath. And he poured his breath out over the void and created what we're walking on today, who we are today. Everything that you see around you and about you, he created with a word. The men of faith in the book of Hebrews, they were commended because they framed their words, worlds, worlds, their worlds, with a verb, a doing word. They framed what they were after with a word. And that's a principle of God, to act in faith. It's a principle of God to allow that word to permeate you, that word to fill you up so much that the word just erupts out of you. Your alabaster jar is holding this incredible, powerful word of God. And faith releases it. That word in your heart, mixed with faith in your heart, produces life. I love this. I love this word. This word feeds me. Whenever I have a problem, I need to know what it is, I go to this word. And, and I'm learning stuff. You know, we, we have a go at science. But the Bible generally proves science, and science is starting to prove the Bible. <laughs> it's not always right in the context men use it, but it's still very relevant. The miracles we see still have a form where science is being outworked because God made science. Is that right, Paul? He's our science teacher. <laughs> Praise God, it's true. So whenever I need an answer, I don't just restrict it to coming out of the Word. I restrict it to the teacher, the Holy Spirit living in me. He's the one that shows me what the word means. He's the teacher. I remember when we first started doing all the towns around the place and, and doing healing and salvation rallies, I remember going to the fraternal at Strath Album because he told me, he said, go to the fraternal. He said, invite them to your rallies. I said, oh, okay, I did that. I said, no, 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 we've got our own stuff, you know, forget it. I said, but we're coming into your town we're not coming to start a church. We're coming to stir up the people to believe and have faith for the miraculous, have faith for healing, and have faith for their salvation. And, uh, and that's what God told me. Call the meetings Healing and Salvation Rallies. And I said, who are you? I said, I'm a bloke down from Middleton that God's been speaking to, and he's told me to come here. And he asked me to invite you all to the meeting. I've hired a hall, I'm advertising in your local paper, and we're going to do one meeting here. And people are going to get saved, and they're going to get healed. And I said, no, sorry, we've got our own program. Thanks very much. See you later. So I went back to the Lord and said, Lord, I did what you said. They don't want it. Can we get on with it? And he said, no. He stopped me dead in my tracks. He said, no, Raph, give them another opportunity. And I'm thinking... I don't want to give them another opportunity. 
I just want to get on with it. You tell me to do something, I'm now in gear. I want to do something. I want to, I'm in the verb stage of what I've just heard. <laughs> All right? And uh, he said, uh, no. He said, give them another opportunity. So I reluctantly went back to them and my greatest fears, they said, listen, mate, we told you once. <laughs> And they paid us out terribly. And I said, Lord, as I went back to him complaining, I said, you knew that would happen. Why on earth did you ask me to go back there a second time and ask, couldn't we just get on with it? And he said, Raps, I got a problem with you. I said, well, what's their problem? He said, the problem is you have no credentials. Mate, now I started kicking and screaming like a little baby. <laughs> I said, I haven't got credentials because you wouldn't let me go to Bible college. You told me you would teach me. He said, yes, I did. He said, so now I'm going to give you my credentials. Here's my credentials. These people, oh, thank you, Lord. These, these people, <laughs> particularly the pastor that I'm going to send you to, has requested this from me. It's his most intimate prayer request. You are going to take him the answer. He said, that's my credential. My credential is that I'm speaking inside of you, that I'm walking with you and talking with you. He said, you don't need credentials if you've got a relationship. Yeah. Remember that, will you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so some of you want to start works and are frightened to do it without man giving you an approval. Well, you'll never move if that's what you're waiting for. <laughs> Amen? But Brick and I were talking down the back there while worship was on. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> but we were yakking. And uh, what, what did you say, Bricky? You said there are many un. Amen. So true. So true. Languishing, waiting for someone to tell you what to do. Well, you've got someone telling you what to do, and it's not me. The Spirit of God. If you have a relationship, you're talking to Him, you're going to hear Him. He's going to talk to you and He's going to share with you what He wants. He'll lead you. Romans 8 14 says this As many as are led of the Spirit of God are true sons of God. You want to meditate on that word for a month or two until you get hold of the very meaning of that word. Some words you need to meditate on to get the actual meaning of them, other words you just need to do. I like Peter. Jesus is walking on water, walks over, and they recognize him. He says, Jesus, he said, come on out here. And Peter goes, oh. <laughs> he didn't think about it. He didn't meditate on it to get the juicy spirit word out of that. He just started walking. He had faith to believe what his Savior had just told him. And while he was believing, he walked on water. While he was fearing, he's sinking. Fear, faith. You've never seen such a clear distinction in the Bible of fear and faith as in that parable. Peter didn't wait. He jumped in and he walked on water. Have you heard of anybody else doing that apart from Jesus? Yeah, Mel Tari. I, I met Mel up over in the uh, Navajo lands in the States when we were ministering to the Navajo. I was ministering in the same tent. And he, uh, he said this. He said, when I was out in the middle of a swollen, raging river, some of his people called out from the shore, how deep is it? He said, I don't know, but I'm standing on firm ground. <laughs> they told him, the centre of that river is something like 40 foot deep. <laughs> yeah. yeah they, they, once they saw him there, they walked across. Before, before one man walked out there, they didn't do a thing. You understand? You've got to hear God. Someone has to hear God to move. And the more impossible it seems, the more God's in it. <laughs> the more impossible that something seems, the more God relishes the opportunity to reveal himself. Amen? Gideon, 300 men against an army that looked like dust. 
grains of sand, thousands. 300 men he takes out. He doesn't load them up with the arrows, shields. He loads them up with a light and something to break it with. <laughs> it's our job is exactly the same. We are the light. If you're broken enough, God will reveal himself through you. Amen. That's what he revealed himself. Once God reveals himself, my God, mankind has no chance. They are drawn to him. And it's our job to allow him to break us and go and do what we need to do. Having said that, that's not what I'm going to preach. Well, God's put on my heart to understand what it is that causes us to be sick. That's got to be worth knowing, doesn't it? And the answer. The answer. I've got to tell you, I'm tired of losing people prematurely to death. I don't know about you. But I'm saying, Lord, you made us verbs. What's happening? <laughs> you made us doing words. What is happening? And the Lord speaks to me in incredible ways, primarily through his word, wakes me up at night, calls me apart at times to tell me things. And he should be doing that with every one of us. This is not a pattern just for a pastor. This is a pattern for every believer to have a relationship with him and to hear what he's saying for you. So I want to hear from me today. I've got to tell you, we might start demonstrating in a second, and maybe then you won't want us to do that. <laughs> but every time I see sickness, I see sin. Sin is a cause of it. Brother, I'm not sinning. I'm a really nice person. I know someone who keeps saying that all the time. <laughs> then I've got to look twice. <laughs> I'm not sinning. I want to tell you, fear is sin. Fear is sin. You know, you go to the doctors, the doctors tell you something's wrong with you. Are they feeding you faith or are they feeding you fear? Doesn't take much to discern things, does it? Fear is the cause of most of our sickness. Unforgiveness is the cause of most of our sickness. All well, those two are, are, are sin. Made there so many. Let's go to um, 2 Peter 1. 2 Peter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. Praise God. I found one Peter, and two Peter should follow. And what's it say? It says, I've got glasses here, yep. Yeah. 2 Peter 1. Would you believe that? I think my page is missing. Mate, that's a terrible Bible, isn't it? I've got a page missing out of my Bible. No, no, I know what it is. It's okay, thanks. <laughs> I know it off by heart. <laughs> hey? Mate, hey, forget that one. D don't go in KGB. <laughs> They're missing a whole page in there. <laughs> Excuse me, having a break, talk to someone, will <laughs> That's all right, I've got another Bible here. Oh, look, there goes a pen. Yep. I know, what about you? You need this as much as I do. <laughs> Praise God. Can you believe the whole page is missing in the Bible? I'm going to write those people. <laughs> I might have ripped it out, you know. <laughs> I might have thought, I can't live up to that, and chucked it away. But no, I don't do it. <laughs> we believe the whole Bible? Yeah. <laughs> I could have I could have written that. I'm blaming them. <laughs> what version was that? NKGB. Oh yeah. New King James. Yep. I like the New King James. But <laughs> excuse me. <I> just gonna <laughs> <laughs> I sneeze in my <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't they say that? Sneeze in the elbow. <laughs> Anybody want to use the mic again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, mate, don't worry. Don't worry. Hang on, just wipe it clean. <laughs> it's anointed. It's an anointed sneeze, okay? <laughs> Simon Peter. Now, Simon's a guy who walked on water, okay? To those who've obtained a like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now here's verse 3. This is the important script today. As his divine power has given to us all things, say all things. That means you're missing nothing, nothing at all. You are lacking nothing. Turn to the person next to you and say, I think he's talking to you. <laughs> yep. You're lacking nothing. You lack nothing, okay? As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life. Say life. We have everything pertaining to life. We lack nothing. Nothing. I'm not missing a piece here. I've got everything that God says I have pertaining to life. It doesn't mention death there. It doesn't mention death there. And there's an answer in this for everyone who walks in fear. Stop it. <laughs> Just stop it. Conquer your fear. Faith will conquer fear. The doing word has already conquered fear for us. Amen? We are partakers of the very nature of Jesus, which is what it says here. His divine power. What's his divine power? His word. His word. His promise to us is divine power to us. That His word becomes divine power in our lives, activated by our faith. Amen. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us Put your hands out. This is how it gives you stuff. <laughs> Put your hands out. By which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that through these, through what? You're not listening. <laughs> that through these, through what? The great and precious promises of God. That through these great and precious promises, you and I become partakers of the very nature of Christ. That nature comes on us. That nature comes into us. That nature becomes part of our DNA. That nature is who are we, we are becoming from one increment of faith to the next. We're actually entering into the very nature of Jesus Christ and where there's life, there is no death, there's no sickness, no problems. And he is making us as he is. Do you know the devil's going to get a shock? He thought he killed one Jesus. In the end, he's going to face millions of us. Do you believe that? Yes. Who was the firstborn? Jesus. Oh, you're good. That was Jesus. In this, in, this, in this testament, Adam was the firstborn again person. So very good. There's 10 points there, buddy. <laughs> But Jesus is the firstborn. He said, I am the firstborn. Who's second? No, oh, you're too slow. I'm going to put my hand up then. <laughs> Who's third, fourth? Who's four millionth? <laughs> Every one of you, if there's a firstborn, it stands to reason that there's got to be a second, third, fourth, and fifth, doesn't there? Why would you, why would you number? We're all born again people. We're born again. We've received the nature of Jesus Christ. When the enemy looks at us, he's not looking at you anymore. He hates the nature of Jesus that's in you. Amen? And that nature of Jesus overcomes everything. You and Christ, formidable. 
Nothing impossible. No, say nothing's impossible. No, nothing is impossible with God. <laughs> nothing's impossible with God. So say this. Me, me with God, with God are impossible to beat. <laughs> me with God, it's impossible to beat. It can't be beaten. I've got to tell you, I've proved it. I, well, I grew up, I'm a skinny little bloke these days, well, when I was a younger man I was buffed up and I used to box and I was into violence and all those things before Christ came into my life. And I didn't know any different. I grew up that way until I came to Christ. And then all of a sudden I couldn't do that. He actually said that to me. He said, you can't deal with things the way you've always dealt with them. But it's a bit, he always times it when you're just about to get into a fight <laughs> or something's just about to happen and you have to deal with that inside. And he speak it to me and that's the best time to teach anybody, when you're in danger of going the other way. And he say to me, you can't do that anymore. And I said, well, it's a bit late. I've got a gorilla coming up my driveway. He's going to beat the living daylights out of me unless I get stuck into him. And I provoked it. <laughs> I'm sorry I opened my mouth. <laughs> and I, I, Denise will tell you, this guy's about six foot five, built like a tank. <laughs> and he was coming to beat me up. And I told him, come on up here, mate, we'll sort it out. <laughs> and uh, he came to my address. I had my kids at home. I had pastors who I was trying to impress. <laughs> at home <laughs> and this gorilla is coming out of the car and all I can see is anger <laughs> coming towards me and the Holy Spirit decides he's going to teach me a lesson right there and then he says you can't do what you've always done <laughs> and I said Lord I'm going to cop a hiding here unless I do what I know to do <laughs> and he said you can't do that. You cannot do that anymore. I said, well, what am I going to do? And he's given me this incredible teaching in a split second. He says, use my word. That the power of God's in his word. Use my word. My God, what a lesson he taught me. He taught me, he taught me that I had that wonderful nature of God inside of me. I didn't feel like I had it at the time. I'm ready to fight. He wanted me to move in love. But I want to fight. No, he's saying move in love. And I'm saying, look, <laughs> I don't know any other way, but he's moving in love. And I looked at the bloke and said, what do you want me to do? He said, use my word. I open the door and this gorilla's slow as wet week. I reckon I could have done him. <laughs> <laughs> but he's telegraphing his punch and I'm looking at him and I can't think of a word I could not think of a word what a terrible time to be void of the word of God when most of the time I'm full of it <laughs> I couldn't think of a word and all of a sudden Denise's Psalm 23 on our on our vanity in our bathroom, comes up. I go, this, the Lord's for seven, I shall not want. Came out like that, came out like a rapid fire. And the guy goes, Zoom. does a somersault in my entrance to my house. Got his legs spread on the ground. His head gets stuck on the floor and he starts screaming. And I go, whoa, mate, that wasn't a bad punch. <laughs> didn't have to do anything. Just use the word of God. And I'm looking, now I don't know what to do. Because I'm geared up. <laughs> like I've got adrenaline going through me. And I've got this pastor at the back with their grandchild. My kids doing their homework at home. I said, what do you want me to do with him, Lord? And he said, cast the unclean spirit out of him. I said, all right. I said, how do I do that? <laughs> oh, I could have. Well, made this work. <laughs> no, the word, the word. Get, get the picture. Stay in the picture, will you? <laughs> the word. 
And he's telling me, he's telling me the word. He's saying, cast the unclean spirit out of him, just like I did. His nature is in me. You and God, nothing can beat you. I've got to tell you, everything is possible, as long as you've got no fear. If you've got fear, don't ever try the situation I get into, because it won't work. If you have fear, it won't work. I've learned to battle and control my fears over the years as I've walked with God. And he's put me in situations where I've been stoned, I've had guns to my head, you wouldn't believe where he's taken us in our walk. But he's made me face fear many, many times. Face a stoning squad in India and ask me, do you really believe, Raf? <laughs> do you know when the Holy Spirit speaks to you like that, you think, my God, do you really believe? And I know that every one of us one day is going to be asked this very same question. Do you believe? Do you really believe what you're reading? Do you really believe? Because I tell you, it warrants action. Amen? There's got to be an action. Good one. There's a faith man. Actually, I've got to tell you, we've got to let you up and give you a testimony. <laughs> the, the things he's been through. <laughs> it takes courage to act on the word of God. It takes courage. So it's got to be void of fear. There cannot be fear. Fear will not action the power of God in your life. Only courage. Only faith. So when he tells you something, you don't have to fear. He's already on the job. Here I have, I've got a bloke there with his head stuck to the floor, screaming like a little girl. Ah! My whole neighbourhood heard it. Next day they said to me, Raph, what were you doing with that person down your place the other day? She said, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. I said, the, uh, the Lord was setting someone free at my house. The guy, he was a, a big fella. And to look at him, you wouldn't believe the spirit he was carrying. But the Lord caused me to speak to it and say, get out now in Jesus' name. And this voice comes out of the bloke and goes, no, I've been here too long. I mean, I can't even, just the voice was just ten times growlier than that. He <laughs> said, no, I've been here too long. I said, what do you want me to do with it, Lord? And he said, continue, Raph. He said, don't listen to it, just continue. It has to leave. You stay with what I've told you to do and it has to leave. This is a good lesson in deliverance, okay? It has to go. And behind every habit, there's a spirit. Remember that, will you? Behind every habit that people have, there's generally a spirit that needs to leave. It's become comfortable in your life, taken hold. A lot of Christians don't believe Christian can be demonised. Some doctrines, Pentecostal doctrines, some. But I've got to tell you, I've seen too much of it. <laughs> People who call themselves Christians get delivered. It just doesn't mix with their theory. <laughs> Theories don't do it. Theories do not do it. Anyway, I, um, I persisted. The thing came out of him. The spirit was homosexuality. This guy did not. I don't know what homosexual looks like, Jeremy. They all look different. <laughs> but this guy definitely looked like a macho dude. You know, he was with it, had it all together, he just got set totally free. And then he snapped out of his being held to the ground, pulled his eyes out and said, thank you very, very much. He said, I've been getting counselled in churches for years. I said, mate, I said, I've got a problem now. I said, you don't look like a homosexual. Said, exactly. No, but most, most homosexuals, you know, the picture you get, is a limp people <laughs> who speak like girls and yeah, they should be boys. They've got a problem with what gender they belong to. And, and, and they act that way. They act. They allow their female nature. Is that what they say? I don't know. But anyway, you can tell the way they walk, the way they talk, the way they are. And I said, but you don't, you don't seem like that to me. He said, no. He said, um, I said, how did you become a homosexual? He said, I was raped when I was four years old. He said, I've felt dirty all my life. I've been in jail. He said, I've been every. He said, things have happened to me. He said, but I'm not a homosexual by need or want or belief. 
but he'd been trapped by this devil spirit that got hold of him. And he needed to be released. Amen? And, and that's our job. Folk, that's not a pastor's job. It's the sheep <laughs> that need to be out doing it as well. Now, the Bible is not just for a pastor to read stories to sheep. It's there so we can change our lifestyle and let Christ work in us. He's, he works in us to change us so he can work through us. <laughs> All right? He works in us to change us so he can work through us. And we need to understand that. We really need to understand. I can't get to this exposing disease roots because he's got me stuck on this manifesting the word. <laughs> I want to speak other stuff. I want to tell you things that are relevant. But they're probably relevant to me. So, <laughs> But I like to know why people are the way they are. I know that if I find out things from God, then I can apply them when there's a need that comes up in front of you. I don't get stuck on making doctrines out of I saw a person get healed. Like that guy comes in, he gets healed, we kick homosexuality out of him, he changes. Unclean spirit. Sin is the problem, okay? That man, he was, uh, symptoms he had. He was suicidal constantly. He was totally depressed. He was angry. Now get, be careful. If you've got anger manifesting in your life continually, it's a bitter root that'll, that'll make other people bitter around you. And, oh, I'm going to get into it, I can't help it. <laughs> There's, there's diseases that God says are diseases unto death. Don't you ever wonder what that means? Don't you ever wonder what that actually means? Sin is sin unto death. Well, I want to tell you, the main one that causes that is fear. Allows in anger. And anger becomes bitter. Bitterness becomes murder. And that disease will taint many people. Many people. But we've got an answer for them. Jesus. But if people continually be angry and they end up controlling situations through their anger, anybody like that here? I'm not going to look. Okay. <laughs> there are people in here who, have, who work like that. There are people throughout Christendom who actually act like this. And they've got anger in them. It doesn't manifest at church. Oh no, we're goody two shoes at church. But when we get home, <laughs> it changes. The real you comes out. Amen? Angry people are in danger of that sin. That leads to death. And God says, don't pray about that. Share the Lord with them. If they get hold of it and they turn, they'll be set free and healed. Is this something you want to know about? Because there are reasons why people are angry. But see, we can't generalise. Just because I minister to someone who's got anger today in that area and I run into someone here with the same problem, it's not the same cause. You know why? Because everybody is different. You're all unique. The doors that have let these things in are completely different in every one of us. Praise God. Close your, close your eyes, will you? Close your eyes. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Keep your eyes closed, okay? Thank you, Father. Allergies. Allergies are caused by fear. God says, I'm going to help you deal with the fear with that today. You're going to be set free today and there's going to become a, a woman who has put on my promises as a cloak and the divine nature is going to come out of those promises and you will walk like I do. The allergies will have no hold of you. And the prior knowledge of how they came, I am going to erase, says the Lord, because they taint you with fear, because you know too much. Does that help? You know that's a word. All you closed eyes people don't know, but it's a word. 
because God wants to set people free in this place. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Fear is a foul spirit. And you're being set free of it today. <laughs> Praise God. Being set free of fear today. Because fear is the main cause of people not being able to receive, not being healed. Everybody, when you talk about sin, they all think, ah, oh, yeah, sexual sin, they're perverted, they're this, they're that. I've got to tell you, if you've got fear, that's probably one of the worst sins you can ever walk in because it will stop you receiving anything from God. That's why the Word of God says, without faith you can't please Him. The opposite of fear is faith. You've all heard fear, F-E-A-R, synonym, false evidence appearing real. You've all heard that saying. But mate, what does it really mean? It means that we react out of fear before we react out of anything else. The devil is causing us to have faith in his doctrines. Who's, who's his doctrine makers? Well, I've got to tell you, when I get a a, uh, an account from a doctor, I filter it through what God's saying. And I, Denise will tell you, I rarely take notice of them. I go in, they, I come out and they've been transformed when we go in there because we share Jesus with them. <laughs> and we share our, do our doctrines with them. They say to me, you know, you, you've got to do this or you won't live. 18 months ago, they wanted to cut out my bladder. They wanted to cut out my bladder because they found eight cancers in my bladder. These are the questions I ask. What's the cause of these things? So I had a two-year battle. They tried everything they could and um, my last visit to the doctor, he looked at me and he said, um, Raph, we're going to have to cut your bladder out. I said, you're not talking to me. I said, because I'm not wearing that. That's not an option, so you're wasting your time telling me that, because that will never happen. I don't feel like peeing out of my finger. <laughs> and I'm not, <laughs> and I'm not going to. He said, but you've got to do something. I said, yeah. I said, my Lord will heal me. I've got the Word of God. And he, he started to get frustrated, didn't he? He said, if you were my dad, I'd, I'd tell you that this is the only option you got. I said, yep, yeah, you're not my dad. My dad will heal me. <laughs> my father in heaven will heal me. Three months later, I went and they checked me out. And he said these words. He said, Raph, this looks good as the camera is going down the wrong thing, you know. This looks real good. And then out of his mouth comes, this is astounding. Astounding. This is a professional who's dealing with these things all the time. I've got to tell you, the Word of God will heal you. The power of God will heal you. Amen? And as long as I keep walking with the Lord straight, and not allow wrong thoughts to come. Do you hear me? Yeah. Oh, you people don't have wrong thoughts. I can see you look shiny and everything. <laughs> wrong thoughts come to everybody, and what you do with them determines whether the plan of God is outworked in your life or the plan of the enemy. Yeah. So hold those thoughts captive to Jesus Christ. Hold those thoughts captive, and the Word of God captive in your heart to Christ. And I want to tell you, you're invincible. You and God, nothing impossible for you. It's the God factor that makes nothing impossible. Amen? You've given your heart to Christ. His nature is on you. If you allow him to grow, I've seen a lot of stunted Jesuses in the church where people stop him growing. He comes in seed form. He's called the Word, say the Word. He's called the Verb, the doing Word. Amen? But he comes in seed form. 
The sower spreads the seed. The word goes into you in a seed form and we want instant coffee, don't we? Instant return. And that happens with miracles. But with healings, sometimes you've got to work through that word because there's a strength coming into you. Just like the butterfly trying to come out of a cocoon. If you help it, it'll die. If you let it go, the natural cause, and let it break out, it gets strong. God wants you strong in the word of God. He wants you strong in your belief in the word of God. And when we're strong in the belief in our word of God, I tell you, nothing becomes impossible to you. Nothing. He says, the only thing that can rob you is doubt. That's fear. Say no fear. Yeah. Praise God. I think you've had enough. Yeah. Just let me finish by reading this. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Say partaker. partaker. Of the divine nature. I can become a partaker of Jesus. I put him on. You can put him on like that. In Ephesians it speaks, Ephesians 5, 19, put Jesus on. Put your, get your clothes in Jesus right now. Come on, put your hands up. You're all under arrest again. Now, when you're getting dressed with Christ and you're putting him on, it's from top down. Any evil stuff comes from the bottom up, all right? Clothe yourself today. Put Jesus on. Put Jesus on. That's the partaker of his nature. Put him on. Put him on. Let that nature show. Let that nature of Christ show in you. You and Jesus are invincible. Do you believe that? Yes. Praise God. Well, it, what's been given to us are exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. What's lust? That's a good question, isn't it? What is lust? Yeah, you want something and you can't have it. That's lust. And most people's minds, when they turn away from God, turn to lust. Doesn't have to be sexual lust. That's, that's the first thought that goes through everybody's head, lust. No, it's what you want. It's what you want. You can't get your mind on what you want. Your focus is on the wrong thing. And it doesn't even need to be that. Lust allows fear to come and change the way you think. Fear comes through lust. Fear then becomes a door opener for everything else. The devil wants you to focus on what you haven't got. He wants you to focus on where the relationship was broken, not where the relationship is mended. Amen. Amen? He wants you to look at the wrong side of every question, the negative side. I've got to tell you, I'm a positive person. I thank God. I don't know what happened to me when I was a kid, but I've always been happy. I have. I, the, the odd times that I've been down in my heart, God has sent me someone to speak to me. Praise God. You know, I, I remember there was a time we, we built a house, Nick and I built a house. It was a beautiful place. It was a Lindell home, a Canadian style home with stone chimneys and it was just beautiful. And um, then the interest rates went through the roof. We started off at 4%, we ended up at 18%. Then there was a glut in the building trade, so you couldn't get materials. Very similar to what we are in now. There's a glut, you can hardly get materials for building. I was thankful. I had work because I was praying. I saw people around me didn't have work. I ended up through a period of time when I had no work, 
at, right in the middle of that for about two weeks. And God told me after, when I came through it, he taught me a lesson. He said, Do you know, Raph, I've given you work all the way through this when others haven't got anything. He said, but not once have you said thank you to me. I'm going, what? He said, you've never once thanked me for what I've done for you. I got on my knees in the mud. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord, I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you for all your supply. I walked into my house and the phone started ringing. I had work pouring out. <laughs> Instantly, I just walked in the house. My phone was ringing. I had concrete jobs coming out of my pockets, you know. I was just, <laughs> it was amazing, really. The lessons we learn in a practical manner. All right, thank you. And so, where was I? Pardon? My house, in the middle of it. I had a brother come to me. The simplest thing broke the fear I had in my heart. You know what it was? A bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> I was miserable as. I was feeling dejected inside, thinking God's deserted me. <laughs> and I thank God for a brother who heard God's voice, who had an ear to hear. We had no money at the time. Everything was going into the house. We had no food in the house. And this wonderful brother came up, had to drive all the way from Campbelltown to Happy Valley. I said, what are you doing? He said, God spoke to me. Here, rejoice. <laughs> I could have Kentucky Fried Chicken. My God, we went for it. <laughs> My sorrow turned to dancing. <laughs> and who would have thought? <laughs> who, who would have thought? <laughs> Amen. Amen. A brother who heard God lifted my countenance. Don't get sad. God's able to deliver whatever you need. You just got to trust. Just trust. That equates to faith. Father, I thank you today as we pray. Actually, look. I just, want to, I just want to do this one thing. There are people here who have allergies. Can you stand up? God's going to heal you today. Allergies, yeah. Allergies. Now these allergies can be breathing problems, asthma. A few more people got to stand up. I don't want to go and pick you up. But <laughs> allergies, asthma. I'd be standing up if I were you because there's something going to happen in this room in a second. What about sinuses? Sinuses, skin problems, rashes. Pray to God. God's going to heal you in this place today. There's healing coming into this room in these areas. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'll just wait a few more minutes. I'll just give you time to respond. This is important. Thank you, Lord. Don't miss out on this opportunity. I've got to tell you, God's going to turn up and do this. He put it on my heart this morning. He said, I want to heal them. So I'm going to show you why. Praise God. I've been preaching about it all morning. I break the power of fear of all of you people here right now standing up. Fear of the consequences of standing on the Word of God. Fear of the consequences of walking in what he's asking you to do. Because he wants to release ministries in this place and fear is the blockage and it causes allergies. Because your immune system starts fighting against you. Your immune system, this is how disease comes into people's bodies. Father, I just break the power of that hypothalamus path, Father, and the way the enemy uses it to cause people sickness. 
I come against the use of the enemy of people's minds, particularly the hypothalamus in the mind. I command you, devil, get your hands off. That's God's projector, not yours. Fear, you must go and not come back in Jesus' name. Have faith. You and God have already won. The nature of God is already taking that fear out of your, oh, thank you, Lord, out of your system, out of your soul. You can't think fear and have miracles and healing at the same time. Fear, leave now in Jesus' name. And don't come back. Allergies, go. Be healed in Jesus' name. If someone has got a rash on their elbow, quite a red rash, who's that? Over there? Who, who is that? A red rash on their elbow? God's healing that right now as a sign to you of what we're speaking. Praise God. A rash on their elbows. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Your faith is going to go through the roof today. Father, we just thank you for what you're doing here today. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Stay close to God. You have the choice to walk in health or walk in sickness. Your choice. Fear, unforgiveness, two main causes of allergies. Hear me? Fear, unforgiveness, two main causes of allergies. In Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated if you like. We're going to have some communion. Yep. Thank you.